Hey guys, it's Sam from West Metal Rabbits, and I am joining you today from a beautiful February day up here in New England. We're having a little bit of Indian summer. I'm wearing my shorts. But today is a great day to be breeding your meat rabbits. This would be putting you at early April when your litters will be reaching eight weeks old, which is old enough to sell or to process. And it's a really great time to get a jump on the game. Especially when you get these nice days like this, it can be a bit chilly in the winter, but you really want to start breeding around early February. It's a great time to get your spring litters off to a good start and really give you a chance to get a few litters in before it starts to get really hot, especially if you're in the south. But you may be running into some issues. If this is your first time breeding your rabbits or they haven't been bred all winter, you may be actually finding it rather hard to breed them. They may not be wanting to cooperate. And I know the saying is rabbits breed like rabbits, but sometimes that can be surprisingly difficult. And especially if you're in the north here where it's cold, and the sun hasn't come out yet, they can actually be very reluctant. Now usually our bucks will be ready to go and the does will be the problem, but what do you do when your buck doesn't want to breed or both of them don't want to breed? Today I'm going to cover a few simple tricks I have to get rabbits that don't want to breed a little bit more cooperative and how you can kind of prevent this issue from happening in the first place. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing to keep in mind here is what time of year it is. Now, meat rabbits have had most of their wild instincts bred out of them. That being said, wild rabbits usually don't breed year round, especially in the heart of winter. And that instinct is still there somewhat in some rabbits more than others. And obviously it's great to select for easy breeders in your breeding program. We really want those genetics to be passed on, but we can also kind of tip the scales in our favor as well. So the biggest thing that affects how willing a meat rabbit is to breed in the natural environment is not actually the temperature, believe it or not. It's the amount of sunlight. Similarly with a chicken, Chickens won't lay eggs if they don't get a certain amount of sunlight, which is why they slow down in the winter. Rabbits tend to be less willing to breed when they don't get a lot of light. Now, in February where we are, the sun is out longer, the days are getting longer. This is being filmed at 4.30 and we still have sunlight, which we wouldn't normally in uh, you know late December. However, if you really want to tip the odds in your favor, you can always put incandescent bulbs inside your rabbit enclosure area. Now, obviously I don't recommend putting that in a hutch where the rabbit is going to come into contact with it or a barn that has a lot of fur and it could start a fire. But if you can actually get your hands on LEDs, which are sometimes lower temp, um, and it doesn't have to be much. If you just leave the light on, you know, for 12 hours a day, that will stimulate that natural response and they will kind of trick them into thinking that they're in more breeding weather. So that is one of the biggest things and that should knock out a ton of your issues right there. Now the next biggest problem we're likely to see is having a rabbit that is fat. This is especially important with does. I can't stress this enough. This girl is a little overweight. That's mostly my fault, but I tend to let it go sometimes, especially when I'm not breeding them. A fat doe is not only going to be less likely to cooperate with breeding, but she will have issues getting pregnant. I bred this girl a couple months ago and she did not conceive, which is why, you know, it's reblocked off my uh, nesting area and the shavings are out here. She just hung out in there. She didn't actually get pregnant. That's because she is overweight. It was also her first time being bred, which is going to lead me to my next point in a second, but keep those rabbits thin. It's really important that we focus on good condition. Now, good condition means the flesh is firm. There's, they're not emaciated. You can't really feel the bones being sharp but you should, should be able to feel some bones and the meat should be firm and there shouldn't be flabby parts of the rabbit. Now, obviously we talked about a dewlap on a doe is okay, but we don't want to see too much fat on a younger rabbit. Now, when the rabbit gets older and she gets the mother's body, that's more acceptable, but we'll get to that in a sec. So let me show you that. So if you saw my video about how to tell if your meat rabbit is pregnant, you'll have seen this girl. She has a beautiful baby litter in there. You can see them there. They're growing up quite well. And she has what I call a mother's body. So she's got some fat deposits here and here, but she's not overly fat, flabby. And we'll excuse that because she's an older rabbit and she's had dozens of litters, which is totally fine. And she actually is the only one of my rabbits that conceived of the last breeding. Now here's another girl who did not conceive during the last breeding. And to contrast, you can see how round her belly is. She is again an overweight rabbit, and this is gonna give you issues if you're breeding, especially if they haven't been bred before. Which brings me to point number three. Breed your rabbits early, breed them often. If your rabbit has not been bred before, 
it is going to be reluctant, especially if it's a doe. We'll get to buck issues in a sec. But does that have not been bred are going to put up a lot of resistance, especially if they have not been bred and they're older. So when your rabbit hits around six months, it's really important to get them bred. If you let it go longer than a year without them being bred, as I did with this girl, which is partially why she's fat, they will gain weight and they will have a much more difficult time conceiving. They will fight you every step of the way. They will avoid it as much as they can and it will just make the process so much harder. So it's really important. You've got like a month window around six months. After that, you've got a month, month and a half where they'll be really eager to breed and you want to breed them as quickly as you can to get that going. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is you also need to breed your rabbits relatively often. I'm not saying they need to be bred to the maximum velocity, but you want to have your does having at least three litters a year because if they haven't had a litter in a long time, again, you're going to get the same issues where the rabbit is going to get overweight, it's going to get reluctant, and it's not going to want to breed. Now, the last couple issues I want to talk about are issues with our bucks. So bucks usually are ready to go. And you can see we've got a great young buck here and he is very interested in what I've got going on. He's sniffing, he's wondering if I brought him a doe, he smells these does around him, and he's very eager. So that's exactly what we're looking for. However, when a buck is listless, when they're not interested in a doe, there can be a couple things going on there. He can be too old, which can happen. You know, most does will stop being able to breed at around three years old. Sometimes they'll go for five, sometimes they'll even go for their whole life, but most are going to be giving you litters very small at that point and are just not going to be interested in breeding. Bucks, on the other hand, can go to the day they drop. The only thing that will constrain them is that they just get too old to do the physical act itself. So that's the first thing you want to make sure is your buck is not too old. You also want to make sure he's not fat. As with the does, fat rabbits are not good breeding rabbits. Now this boy here is sleek. I keep my bucks lean and I keep them mean. And believe it or not, that actually makes them better breeders. They have more energy, more stamina, they're more active, and they're ready to go. A fat buck <laughs> is not going to be wanting to, you know, go absolutely crazy and chase a doe around his cage. He'll probably just want to lie back and eat some food, um, which is not what we want. Now, another completely unrelated issue we can have with bucks is that they're totally eager, but it's their first time and they don't know what they're doing. Now, you can't blame the buck for this, but again, the earlier you breed the buck, the better. He'll learn quicker, and you also want to make sure that he gets plenty of action early on. So what I like to do with my new bucks is I don't like to breed them to does who's never been bred before. Because if he has a bad experience, if the doe attacks him, if... You know, he tries and he tries and he tries and he's just unable to breed. That can actually permanently mess up your buck's psychology, so to speak. I know, they're a lot like uh, humans. <laughs> we digress. But yes, bucks are like humans. If they have a bad first time experience, it can really mess them up um, and make them unwilling to breed further down the line. So the best thing to do with your new buck, if he hasn't been bred before, is get him with one of your old, more experienced does who's very willing and kind of willing to put up with his shenanigans as he tries to figure the whole thing out. And once you do that, and he gets a few of those under his belt, you'll have no problem. But bear with a buck that has not done it before. It may take two, three, four times, but you'll get there eventually. And now this brings us up to the final segment here of do I have any tips and tricks to kind of nudge things along? Okay, so assuming we've checked all those things off the list, your rabbit is getting plenty of light, it's in good condition, your buck is healthy, he's got some experience, ideally your doe has a little experience too, um, we can start to rule out a lot of things. Now, what if you're in a situation as well where you have a fat doe, like mine, or you have an inexperienced buck, or you have some other thing going on that we just talked about that's not ideal, but you still want to get them bred? Well, you can, but it takes patience. So the first thing to keep in mind is, is it may not happen the first time. So what you want to do is take the buck to the doe's cage, as usual, we always do this, put him in there, Supervise them for five minutes. If it's not happening, it's not happening. Take the buck out. Now, leaving them in there is never a good idea. They're just going to fight. If it's not happening within five minutes, it's probably not happening at all. You can do that, you know, two or three times a day. And it's important to remember, does are induced ovulators. So that act of the buck trying to mate with them may end up putting them in the mood, causing them to ovulate, which will make them more receptive. So if you put the buck in, <clears throat> excuse me. So if you put the buck in, you know, in the morning and she's not having it, but in the afternoon, again, she's not having it. One more time at night, she seems a little warmed up, but not really. And then you do that again the next day, you have a really good chance of it being successful. And you could do this day after day after day. It can be frustrating, it can be tired, but if you're consistent with it and you do it every day, a few times a day, or at least once a day, 
usually you'll eventually have some success. Of course, it's great in this situation if your does are overweight, try to get them into condition. It's very hard to cause rabbits to lose weight once they're fat, they kind of stay fat, but it can never hurt. And then the next thing you can do is if you're not having any success and you've been at it for a week, you can take the buck and put it in the doe's cage and take the doe and put it in the buck's cage and have them spend a night there and then try breeding them. Sometimes being around that scent, it'll definitely get your buck riled up if he's being lazy, but it will also sometimes help the doe along. Now I'm talking a lot about the doe and that's because if our buck is not really willing, he's not really what we should have in a herd. You should be culling a buck who's giving you a ton of breeding issues. Unless it's some extenuating circumstance with the weather or not enough lights or something that we talked about, he really should be pretty much always ready to go. If he's had a bad experience, he's been traumatized, that buck is not worth keeping around. It's not worth trying to re rehabilitate. It can be pitch black, dead of winter, negative five degrees, and my bucks are still ready to go. So a buck issue is usually the best answer is to cull. Does, it can be a little more hit or miss. So my final solution here is if you're still having issues after doing all of this, you could try putting a little apple cider vinegar in the buck and the does water. I have no idea if this works. Apple cider vinegar is good for a lot of things with humans. It's been said to be good for a lot of things with rabbits. When I'm completely stumped and I'm at the end of my wits, I do that and it usually works. Now granted, I'm doing everything else I just talked about, so you should be stacking these things up. Consistently breeding, okay, it's not working. Spending nights in each other's cage, okay, still not working. Then I add some apple cider vinegar in, maybe it works. It may just be the fact that I've been consistently doing everything I talked about, but you know, it can't hurt. At the end of the day, however, there really is no hacks to this. Animals are going to do what animals are going to do. And if you follow all the instructions I laid out before, you should not be running into issues. Ideally, you want your rabbits to breed easy and often. And if you are running into issues, you may want to consider culling the rabbit. And again, breed early, breed often. If you let the rabbit sit for a year and a half, there may not be much you can do there because it just once they get out of that, they're just out of it. But uh, I hope this video was helpful, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And either way, get breeding. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks.